Welcome to Strip Cover Lit. I'm Adrian Fort, and I am here to respond to a tag that we were tagged in. We were tagged by Josh over at Literary Gladiators in his original Freddie Mercury tag, uh, or Queen tag. It was a Queen tag in honor of Freddie Mercury's 75th birthday. And I'm here to respond to that. And I just want to get out there. First off, one thing, I tried to do this with a little bit more of a short story slant, just to add something to it. And two, I am in love with this idea and with this tag. I grew up a Queen fan. Uh, Queen was always in my life. And uh, I really enjoy this tag. So let's get to it. Number one, Bohemian Rhapsody a work that you feel successfully tells the story from multiple points of view. And for this, I chose Puppy by George Saunders, uh, which we did a review for the channel. And uh, I just really think that the, the two mothers involved in this story have, or the two uh, adult women involved in this story, well, yeah, they're both mothers, uh, have such different lives, but are essentially trying to do roughly the same thing and that created such an interesting dynamic number two we will rock you slash we are the champions an author you support the way a sports fan continues to support their favorite team i gotta i gotta go with hemingway here i don't really have a choice if you watch the channel for an extended period of time uh you'll understand that i think that hemingway is sort of a polarizing figure in the same way that Freud is maybe in that everyone looks at Hemingway and yeah it one of the greatest but that comes with more than a fair amount and more than a fair share of haters as well and um, though I don't know that Hemingway's work is belittled by some in the same way that Freud's is. I do know that there are some people out there who hate Hemingway just to hate Hemingway. And still, he is the champion. Three, Don't Stop Me Now. A work you could not put down. Uh, for me, this was Best American Short Stories 2013, edited by Elizabeth Strout. There, I don't know that any of my favorite short stories are in this collection, but it is a collection of short stories that each one of them is just weird enough and just different enough from the last that you can't look away from it. And as a writer, I will say that as a writer, this is one of the more profitable collections of short stories that I've ever worked my way through. Number four, Killer Queen, a dominant or badass female character. I've got to go with Miss Laura from Miss Laura by Juno Diaz, and we, we did a review for that short story on the channel. And it, it's, maybe it's just recency and maybe it's a Juno Diaz bias, but Miss Laura in that story is impossible to look away from. And I think She's just enough part mythos that anyone, male or female, can relate to what our protagonist is going through as Miss Laura is seducing him. Number five, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, a work that includes a ridiculous and or forced relationship. And for this, I chose the relationship between the narrator and Barbie in A Real Doll by A.M. Holmes because <laughs> my friend Ian in grad school let me borrow his collection uh, of, of that short, of short stories in which that short story is featured. And um, I read it on a whim. I just picked it up and saw the title and thought, well, that sounds interesting. And I remembered it until I had to buy my own edition. And the short story itself is just so bizarre. 
and yet so real that I think, again, not, not to, to plagiarize myself from the last question, but it's impossible to look away from. You can't stop reading that short story because of the characters involved and the dynamic between them. Number six, Under Pressure. A work you were pressured to read. Lord of the Rings. Also, Harry Potter. Neither of these are very good, and I wouldn't recommend them necessarily to anyone else, although Harry Potter has some merits to it. Number seven, I Want to Break Free, a pioneering feminist work. Uh, I'm guessing that Josh has seen the video for I Want to Break Free, which makes that prompt hilarious. Uh, Josh chose Sappho, so in order to sort of honor his decision, I'm going with Emily Dickinson, uh, who may have been the greatest poet of all time. Number eight, Radio Gaga. A dystopian work that makes you uneasy because you fear its predictions will be correct. Sea Oak by George Saunders. Uh, I'm not even sure that it's necessarily set in the future. But it is such a wacky world that uh, I hope that never comes to be. But with the with the fact that Donald Trump might be elect, elected president, it seems to be an indicator that general intelligence is on the decline, and that's the world in which Sea Oak exists. Number nine, I want it all. An author or collection you want to own in their entirety. And um, I'm going to go back to George Saunders here because his voice is very consistent, um, maybe too consistent, but his works are very eclectic. And he's coming out with a novel soon. And I'm, I'm interested to see what that is and where it goes. But just judging from the, the three collections of his short stories that I've read, um, he's all over the place, and that'd be something interesting to be able to see. Uh, ten, innuendo. The most suggestive line in literature? I'm just going to go ahead and go with the entire poem of The Flea by John Donne. Um, I'm not sure I need to say much more there. 11. I'm going slightly mad. A work that you enjoy for its eccentricity. Uh, and for this, I chose The Caveman in the Hedges by Stacey Richter. Uh, again, just a, a very strange short story, but one that I think is definitely worth a time investment. And though I have not necessarily really uh, decoded the literary value that is there completely for myself, I know that it's there and it's something I'm going to go back to continuously. 12. The Show Must Go On. A work that you enjoyed that was posthumously released. Uh, and for this, going back to Hemingway, The Last Good Country. It was released posthumously because it was not even finished, but some of the characterization in that short story is gorgeous and uh, definitely 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 worth reading um, 13 the playlist what are your favorite queen songs <laughs> the show must go on is my absolute favorite I'm going slightly mad and innuendo or strong contenders so the end of this tag made me just giddy uh, good Old Fashioned Lover Boy would be on there. But because I'm a queen hipster, I will go with Mustafa. Um, it's easy to forget that Freddie Mercury was actually born Farouk Bulsara in Zanzibar. And, we, you know, you think of him as just a Brit, right? But if you... Right now, YouTube Mustafa Queen, and it'll, I mean, the vocals by, by Freddie are second to none, and you, I, I don't even know what else to say. 
And finally, Fat Bottom Girls has to make the cut. Um, now because I am a queen hipster, I'm going to go ahead and add my own number 14 here. Um, and that will be Mr. Bad Guy from Freddy's solo album in 1985 of the same title, Mr. Bad Guy. And the question for this is, who is your favorite villain from a short story? And right now, uh, for me, that is Oakley from The Kind of Light That Shines on Texas by Reginald McKnight, because he is in some ways the traditional big bad, but in the same ways that he is the traditional big bad, he is also, the, the story's about racism. Uh, that's one of the themes in the story, um, but it's the most heavily pronounced. And it is interesting to see, I, I mean, obviously he's the bad guy and he's a white kid who's extremely racist. But when you read that short story, you have to feel bad for him in a way as well. And I think that that complexity to the traditional big bad is interesting. And the fact that he is um, upended in the short story by another character who serves as a villain is interesting in a short story that has a fairly classic narrative arc. 15. Somebody to love, who do you tag? First off, Rachel Louise Atkin for the sheer Britishness of it all. Also, Indian Somniac, partially because he has super interesting things to say and partially because he does his videos to a slideshow. And I want to see him Photoshop Freddie Mercury next to me on the strip cover lit set. Get rid of Dalton. Put Freddie in there. Uh, also, Erica from Perks of Books because she needs to learn who Freddie Mercury is. Also, Monse because she's already lip synced to Eminem on her channel. And if she lip syncs to Freddie as well, well, I stole Frodo's ring, and it's yours if you want it. Also, Hannah from Craving Books, because I'm pretty sure she's mad at us. And lastly, Jordy from Let's Talk About Books Baby, uh, because I just want you to make more videos. So there it is. Um, if you saw this and you liked it, hit like and subscribe. If you would like to help us create more content, there is a link in the description below to our Patreon.